but I'm, but it's like such a actual rhythm of mine now to be on there to sharpen. And I, and I pick a skill every single year. What's up guys. Welcome to five minute fatherhood. So we know so many of you guys are dealing with sudden unemployment or you have friends that are dealing with unemployment. Some of you are dealing with underemployment where people are being furloughed. How do you handle that? And there's obviously a lot of ways to to do this. There, there's a certain mentality that I just want to really encourage you guys to avoid if you are uh, finding yourself suddenly unemployed, and that is uh, to go passive, um, to suddenly uh, kind of decide that I just need to wait until this whole thing blows over, and then we start applying for jobs. In the meantime, I'm just going to crush Netflix or something. <laughs> like, please don't <laughs> don't do that. Um, a yeah. couple of things I really encourage you to do. First of all, stay in rhythm. It's really important that you work and rest is not an employment thing. It's a it's a biblical rhythm thing. Um, we we work six days a week, and it doesn't matter to us whether or not somebody else is employing us or not. You know, if I'm going in and out of certain jobs, April is. If our, my kids are, it's like no, we work six days. Now, one of the things that really is helpful when you think that way is that if you're looking to what what that means is productive work during that time. And so that can obviously be things like, you know, sending out your resume and applying for new new jobs, learning new jobs, but it can also mean trying to take on a, you know, a new challenge as a family. And one of the things that this could allow an opportunity for, one of the things I'm excited about, we talked about it in a previous podcast, is this can begin to create an opportunity for the household to become an economic uh, unit again. In other words, a productive economic unit where where there are household-based industries and household-based enterprises. And there's a lot of really low barrier to entry there, ideas that you can maybe pursue. Um, and so like our family, we're doing a lot of our a lot of more homegrown stuff where we're doing like microgreens and mushrooms in the house and different things like that. Things that can be easily sold at a farmer's market, but things that really uh, I can do with my kids. I love looking for like jobs that include like real uh, amounts of low skill labor when my kids are start, starting to get old enough to work a little bit. Things like landscaping, um, you know, you can you can do a lot of that kind of stuff. Gardening, like I just described, um, and then you can just think about th- there are so many little trades that you can pick up on the side. Things like appliance repair, um, you know, remodeling. Kind of at a, at a you know, we just talked about YouTube at the previous podcast in terms of like cooking. But man, I just it's such a great opportunity for you to learn new skills. You can almost learn an entire trade on YouTube. Um, so in other words, do, yeah. like don't just be passive. Um, if that means you can you can start to freelance something that you're doing. Um, there's a lot of opportunity to to do productive economic activity in and through the home more now than really ever because of the internet. And a lot of times, if you're in a mentality where no, I've invested so much in this career, so much in my degree, I will not work outside my degree. I'll either wait for the next job or do be unproductive. Um, I really encourage you guys to to not have that mentality. Um, it's really good to to begin to develop multiple streams of income, multiple ways of thinking about work. Um, different ways of, of getting involved in different trades. Um, you can do this from home, from the internet, for in so many areas. And I know this might not solve every problem. It may not help you completely come out of whatever economic situation you find yourselves in, but it's way better than being passive. But Jeff, what are your thoughts about how, how to kind yeah, of Yeah, I was going to say the exact same thing. Not to always go revert back to YouTube, but I feel like it's a, it's, it's, People haven't even seen what they haven't seen. Do you right. know what I mean? Like you don't, you don't know what is on there. The amount of free resources that people walk you through things, give you the tools and tips. I mean, I'm on there every single night watching usually a blend of food videos, technology videos for actually like work-based stuff and then just other random stuff. So it's like, I'm always on there like learning usually about food or technology <laughs> yeah. um, just because that's what I think is in my recommended and what I like to watch the most. But I'm, but it's like such a actual rhythm of mine now to be on there to sharpen. And I, and I pick a skill every single year that I try to harness and try to lean into. And one year it was cooking, one year it was woodworking. That was all. And then all, and now looking back, all of them have been from YouTube, right? Mm. So one was cooking. I learned all how to cook on YouTube. One was woodworking. I learned all of it on YouTube. One was Photoshop, learned all of it on YouTube. This year's the ukulele. I'm learning it all on YouTube. So it's nice. like, it's all there. Yeah. And what I would say is yes, like, it's a stewardship issue. So does that mean that like, oh, just build this side hustle in this business and it's going to blow up? No. But I do think it won't go to waste if you are maybe in a season of loss of job, don't know what to do, if you're just using the days to learn something, right? right? As a family, collectively, or by yourself, or kind of blend them together uh, as two separate things. I think if you're just 
that's just good stewardship. And it never is wrong to learn. It's never wrong to lean in. You never know what will happen, what will bounce off, what facet will shine differently that takes you down another way. Yeah. Um, so it doesn't even have to be like, I think, a business. Um, a lot of times it can be. But I think just leaning into the learning aspect is, is first step. Have good stewardship of your time. Um, and then second step, you'll start to kind of get inklings of like, oh, this is, I'm crafted for this. I'm more bent towards this. This could be something yeah. that the Lord could bless. And if you put all that together, I think that's really, really huge. Yeah. I, I have some friends that, that they, when they're in between jobs, they decided to take a month or two and start to do st- stuff with their kids that was a little bit on the hobby side, learning stuff like you're describing, Jeff. And now that's their full-time thing. And now they're working with their kids like 30, 20, 30, 40 hours a week. Yes. And this is something that's just so amazing. And I, I just, again, we live in a day and age where this is more possible than ever. So I encourage you guys to do that. One of the things we, we want to let you guys know, you just heard us talk about the importance of living into a week. One of the ways that we like to order our week uh, is by having a physical paper calendar that's actually designed around the week, but really big, big enough so the whole family can get around the calendar and plan together at a weekly meeting. And so if you want to see the resource that we recommend for that, it's called the Family Plan Calendar. You can find that at familyteams.com. And so those are super helpful for getting you guys on the same page, for helping kind of guide you through a weekly family meeting and get you into a seven-day rhythm. So check that out. Uh, Again, Family Plan Calendar at familyteams.com.